Powers Conference follow-up webinar. As you know, we're going to be extending the conference throughout the rest of the year. So we're going to be doing one webinar per week and always be at this time on Wednesdays. So we hope that you will continue for our follow-up series. Before we get started, I just want to give you a little bit of background on Foundations, Inc. We are a national education nonprofit. We're located in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And our mission is to improve the quality of education by building skills of educators. We work across the school, after school programs, schools, districts, and at the state level. And our goal is really to create a brighter future for every child every day. So if you're interested in learning more about our organization, just take a minute and follow us on social media. Paula will put our social media um, handles in the chat box or you can take a look at our website, which is www.foundationsinc.org. And now I would like to welcome Jasmine Castleberry, Chief Executive Officer of the After School Professional. Jasmine has spent over 16 years in the out of school time field. Through her work leading multiple continuous quality improvement efforts in various organizations across the nation, she has developed performance-based goal-oriented solutions through effective staff management and program planning, it's resulting in increased productivity and high retention. So thanks for joining us today, Jasmine. Thank you, Elizabeth, and welcome. Good uh, No, it's not morning. Well, it's morning for some people. It is afternoon for others, so happy day. A uh, good day to everybody. Uh, my name, uh, thank you, first of all, to Elizabeth and Paula for the invitation to be able to come uh, and, and speak with everyone um, about this topic that is just very important to me and important in the after school and out of school time field. Uh, and thank you so much for that introduction. I appreciate that as well. Um, and so we are going to be talking about quality improvement, which I know guys might, uh, it, it tends to be one of those topics that's kind of boring and people are like, CQI, I don't wanna talk about this. I just wanna do programming for the kids. Uh, but we all have um, challenges that arise in our programs that sometimes we feel like don't get addressed or they do get addressed, but then they fall by the wayside. And continuous quality improvement or CQI is literally one of those things that um, helps manage the work and move us along uh, to meet our outcomes and our outputs and all of those measures, right? Um, so I tend to be like a data person sometimes, but I also am a program person. Um, and just to give you guys a little bit of a background about me, I currently um, am, the, am the CEO and principal consultant for the after school professional. And we aim to uh, provide uh, executive coaching, training solutions to out of school time and educational organizations um, and provide personalized solutions. So the good thing, thing about our workshops is they are personalized every time. So we understand that it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. Um, and I have been in the OST field for over 16 years, 20 years now at this point in Austin, Houston, and New York City. And we will later on be talking about some of my New York experiences and how that relates to CQI. Um, I want to, first of all, uh, let you guys know or ask you a shameless plug really quickly. If you follow me on Facebook, The After School Professional, or on Instagram, we do have uh, CQI workbooks that uh, I would love to give away to two people. So at the end of this presentation, I will just randomly pick one person from Instagram, one person on Facebook, and I will mail personally mail you guys um, a couple of copies of the CQI workbook to help kind of move your work along and help encourage you and your teams to uh, meet together regularly and document the work and measure your progress. Um, if you'd like to connect with me on LinkedIn, I absolutely would love to do that as well. You can follow the After School Professional on LinkedIn or me, Jasmine Castleberry. All righty. So 
Here's our agenda for today. We are going to do an icebreaker. We're going to define CQI and hopefully in a way that is simplified and easy for everyone to understand. Normally when I do CQI uh, uh, classes or sessions or workshops, they can be in three hour in increments because we actually go through CQI with that organization and with that team. So today is literally going to be a CQI 101. Okay, um, I am a talker, guys, and I'm very energetic, but I want you guys to also participate with me. I know a lot of you guys have your cameras off, and that is okay. I'm never going to require people online to have their cameras on. But for our icebreaker, I am going to request that you guys come on camera because it's going to be something that's fun, and you're going to want to, like, you know. I'm gonna ask some people to showcase uh, some things. So then I am going to share an example of some really great CQI, an organization that practices it, but actually uh, does not know that they're doing it, okay? but it's a really great example. Then we're all gonna practice together. And I was sharing with Elizabeth and Paula earlier that if we were in person, I would put you guys in groups or if I would have had the opportunity to present at the conference, I would have had breakout sessions. But for the purpose of today, we are all going to practice together, together. I also randomly sing um, at random times through my presentations. So just, you know, go with it, please. And then at the end, we will reflect. I will ask if you guys have any questions that I can answer. Um, I would absolutely love to be able to do that right now. So I hope that uh, we are able to just come together. This is me, you know, teaching you guys about CQI, but it is not meant to just present. I really would love for this to be an interactive experience with all of us. All righty. Oh, look at that. Are you ready to have some fun? Uh, yeah, you can put a thumbs up. You can put a yes in the chat box. Let me know that you're interacting, you're engaging. And here we go, everybody. So our icebreaker for right now, and this is one of my I, every time I see this done or every time I do it with a group of people, there's so much laughter and just, it's just, it's, it's going to tap into our, our inner youth. Okay. So what I want you guys to do, I'm going to give you like 15 seconds. I want you to find three to five random objects near you. Just, just grab three to five. I, I have a jar here. I, I don't know why I have a jar. I have a pen. I have a pen here. Uh, of course, I have a mask, okay? Um, I have a bobby pin. I'm literally, when I tell you guys, I'm literally just grabbing stuff from around me. So please, three to five items, three items, five items, four items, whatever you want to do. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Lisa. I see you guys on camera. Hello, hello. All right. So three to five items. And does everyone have their items? Now, I want you to create a new game using only those items, okay? So if I have my, my bobby pin here, <laughs> my mask here, my pin, my jar, I want you guys to create a, a, a quick little game, okay, that you can play right there at your, at your desk, a little brain break of sorts. Okay, if, if you can. And only using those items, I want you to create a game. And I'm gonna give you guys just a few minutes to you know come up with that. I will also want you to come up with a name for your game. And then at the end, I'm gonna ask some people to share their game, the name of it, and then give us instructions. And if you can, because I know a lot of us have um, backgrounds on, so we might not be able to see, but if you can, show us a little bit of how to play your game, <laughs> that would be great, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys about three minutes to figure that out, to do that. And I'm gonna put in the chat box, the instructions to the game for those new people that are coming in. I love it, Jay Persia, Oliver Smith, ready as ever, items secured, love it. Okay. 
and someone else says that they don't have access to a camera, guys, that is perfectly fine. You do not have to be on camera, but you can still participate if you'd like to. You just won't be able to to show us the game, but if you'd like to come off mute when I ask for volunteers, you can absolutely come off of mute, give us the name of your game, what items you chose, and then tell us how to play your game, okay? All right, couple more minutes. I see some people over there, okay. Some people dropping some items on the ground, okay. <laughs> Because maybe, you know, the things, the items are rolling off of the desk and that's perfectly fine too, so. All right, are there any questions about this game that I can answer for you? Again, this is, look, if, if you're in Alaska, okay, um, and it's nine o'clock in the morning, then hopefully this is, is helping you guys, um, you know, wake up and energize if you there you go thank you courtney i see that thumbs up going on over there and uh you know maybe you have coffee but maybe you don't but you don't need the coffee if you've got this fun game uh uh okay all right or maybe if you are in a place that it's kind of cold then you know using this game to get your upper body moving while you're sitting at the desk can help uh warm you up Okay, I'm just grasping for straws right now. Um, but I told you guys that I like to talk. So, uh, you know, that's, that's what's gonna happen whenever I give you guys the opportunity to do things on your own. I'm just gonna talk. Okay, all righty, so. <laughs> all right, let's see if I can get this computer working here. There we go. So I said five minutes, but I wanted to, Keep it down a little bit lower. Alrighty, so let's go. We have about 30 seconds. Is, is there, are there any volunteers? Again, I would love for you to give us the name of your game, show us the items that you chose, and then tell us how to play your game. If you can show us uh, so that we can laugh at you, that would be great too. Um, but if you can't, then that is that's perfectly fine as well, so. Any starters? Come on, guys. I know y'all don't want to hear. I, well, you did come to hear me talk. I was going to say, I know you don't want to hear me talk the whole time, but that's pretty much probably why you logged on. Uh, however, I did say at the very beginning that I love my sessions to be interactive. Um, and I'm never going to call anyone out because I don't want to do that. I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. If you don't want to play your game, that's perfectly fine too. But if there's anyone, Christian, thank you so much. Uh, Christian, what is the name of your game and the items that you chose and how do you play your game? So I just grabbed um, this coaster that I have. Um, one of my friends makes these and it says it's it's a coaster that says one thing at a time. It's one of my little reminders. So I made up a game, um, word find, coaster word find. And the words, the letters on here, um, I thought of having a index card to make up new words out of the letters on here. So out of all the letters, make new combinations of words and try to get as many as you can. Christian. I love that game, okay? Can you hold it up for me one more time? All righty, we've got one thing at a time. I would already have five points because I would choose one thing at a time. Go, Jasmine. All right, all right. <laughs> Christian, I actually think that's a great idea. That was so smart. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to... Uh, take a stab at it. Let me check the, the chat as well, because I think I saw someone in here. I know, I know you guys have some great, cute ideas. Michelle says that she doesn't have a mic, but the game that she has created is called Hands On, and you close your eyes, and you feel the items, and you try to identify. So she had chosen a stapler, a cup, covered with yarn. I would never get that. I'd be like, what is this hard yarn here? Like, what is this? Um, a heat gun and a tube of Burt's Bees lotions. That's all on Michelle's desk, y'all. 
Um, so, you know, that's a kid, that's a person that works with children. You can tell. All right. I love that. Thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing. Can I get one more person? I just, I just know y'all are so creative. C uh, Cecily, my game is called Stack em. So I have there we go. an Eiffel Tower, but it's my sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a bow. Mm -hmm. And I have some stamps. Mm -hmm. And I have a coin purse. Love and it. so the goal was to see how to stack them. And Love so it. I used my coin purse as the base, obviously, because it would, was too heavy to go on top. Yeah. And I was able to get my bow to sit on top of and then not on my hand. Yes. 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 I love and that game. Stamp. And then the stamps. Can you use the stamps, Cecily, to tape the items together? Well, I wouldn't say why not. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> I love that game. Anything that you have to stack and is going to fall all over the place is fun for me and I'm sure fun for the kids too. So I appreciate, thank you guys so much to those three people who volunteered, but I know, I just know in my spirit, I feel it in my spirit that other people had some really great games too. And so I want to do uh, very quickly what, I, some questions, right? And so um, how did you feel when I told you to find the three to five items, what was going on in your head? Was anyone like, oh my goodness, I've played this game before. I already know what she's going to ask us for. Let me be strategic in what I'm looking for. Were you nervous about it? Were you kind of like, oh, what's happening here? All of that. Anyone, what, are, what were your first thoughts? Or what were your first thoughts when I gave you the instructions to the game? Like, okay, I have to come up with this this weird game all of a sudden. I literally was gonna log in and just like multitask and do other work because my boss told me to log in to this webinar. Like, I know I'm sure some of you guys asked uh, or thought that in your head, right? Uh, but then you were like, okay, wait a second, I have to come up with a game, this is cute. So what were your immediate thoughts or your immediate reactions? Paula says that she had no idea what the objects were for, were for. Someone said that they recognized uh, the the game from before from before, right? And uh, Paula, once she had found out, she was worried that she picked bad objects for coming up with the game. I love that. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. No anxiety in finding the items, but was paralyzed when you directed us to create a game. I love that. I'm glad that I paralyzed you with fear. That makes me happy. And so <laughs> the entire point, you know, when I do icebreakers, I don't like to do meaning, meaningless games, right? I like to tie them to the topic that we're going to be talking about. And so today, because we're talking about continuous quality improvement, the purpose of this game is to show you there's always an answer. There's always a solution. You may have thought that you picked up the wrong items, you might have thought, oh, okay, well now I have to, I have to, I have this, this game here and this is the only thing that I can think of, right? Well, when you're working in a team of people, when I, when we're face to face and I do this activity, you have a group of like five people and everybody has different ideas about what uh, kind of game you can put together. And I'm sure some of us also saw other people's games and said to themselves, you know, I think that I could do something else with that, right? Or here's another idea for a game. So remember we had one person that had the, I love the stacking game, right? And then in my head, I was like, well, I wonder if you can tape, use those stamps as tapes, as tape, right? Um, so there's always another way at looking at things. I also, you know, I, I tie it back to CQI, which is what I just did, but I, uh, there you go. There's a free game for all of your programs. If you feel like you have nothing to do with your kids, then just be like, you know what, find five items and come up with the game. And then all of the kids in the class can play everybody's game and you've got, you know, lesson plans for weeks. So <laughs> not weeks guys, it has to be aligned to academic standards. Don't forget that. All righty. So <laughs> again, look, I told y'all I like to talk. So, um, okay. I'm trying to get my, oh, there we go. 
Oh, I put a cute little graphic in there that I forgot about. That's adorable. Okay, so what is CQI? Now we know that over the past few years, CQI has been a trending topic in the out of school time field, right? But it is also one of those things that's overwhelming and daunting because it sounds so technical. Continuous quality improvement does not sound like social emotional learning. Social emotional learning, we're all like, that's fun. We Emotions and collaboration and relationships, that seems easier to address than something that's talking about outcomes and logic models and stuff, right? Or we know that another, uh, a, a past trending top topic was STEM, right? Or STEAM. So those are easier to address because it's like, oh, great, we just find a contractor that can come in and teach the kids about engineering. Or we know that we have to add some more math um, activities or add more math into our lesson plans and our curriculum design. But CQI is just so, um, it, it puts a lot of pressure on programs to document what it is that they are doing, what they say they're doing, and how to, to measure their progress. But really, CQI is so, so easy and so simple and is one of the best tools to moving your program ahead. Okay, so CQI is literally just a project planning tool that encourages all of your team members, excuse me, to continually ask what can be done better, right? And I love CQI because not only does it help programs that are struggling to meet numbers or struggling with recruitment or struggling to retain staff or, or struggling in whatever area. It also supports programs that are doing really, really well, right? And it says to those programs, how can we, how can we be better? How can we be great? What else can we do? It also, I love saying CQI is literally saying, now what, right? Because you should never stop in our programs. Uh, you should never stop planning. You should never stop trying to move to the next level. Um, I love that with um, Texas ACE, they have a continuum, you know, developing, progressing, stuff like that, right? So it measures um, the quality of the work that we're doing. And so CQI is literally saying, now what? What is it that I need to do now? So, so what does it include? What does CQI include? It includes a CQI team, a problem statement, a desired outcome, identification of causes, and my favorite part, a celebration at the end, right? Um, and so this, again, can look very daunting because it's like, oh my gosh, this is like the scientific method. And I, I feel like I'm back in fourth grade at a science fair with the hypothesis and the, you know, all of, no, 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 no. Literally, your CQI team is made up of people who you already work with. So that is your team, right? So it could be consistent of your executive director, your program director, your program manager, a site coordinator. Your CQI team could also involve people from uh, the community, some vendors, council people. Um, it could include parents, which I love, parents and adult family members, to bring them on and have conversations with this dedicated group of people to say, how do we move our program forward? How do we address certain issues? Because, you know, a lot of times in OST programming, we like to work in silos, right? So if I am the site coordinator of my team, of my school, my program, uh, my group of students, uh, then I don't really ask for help because I'm the one that's responsible. But a CQI team helps to give different perspectives, right? So just because you think that you might know what's best, it's so important that you get other people's um, um, opinions or ideas. So remember the games that we were playing, right? One person came up with this idea. They presented the idea to us. But so many of us were watching and we were like, hmm, I could do it this way. Or maybe if you included this, it would be better or different right? Because sometimes different is not always better. It's just different, right? Um, and so it includes these, these factors here. And I just want to remind you guys that CQI also includes 
um, your your logic model, your output, your outcomes, and stuff like that. But that is for that is a much longer conversation. Um, it takes a, a little while to really learn the depths of CQI. But this is one of these. This presentation at the end, you should be able to leave and say, you know what, I'm going to start a CQI team. We're going to identify a problem, and we're going to and we're going to move forward from there. And we're going to say, this is what we want to happen, and these are the steps it's going to take to get us there. So, when do you use CQI? You can use CQI when you're starting a new project, right? So maybe you are um, having to uh, put together an end of year showcase, or you have to do um, a new entrepreneurship project with your high schoolers, right? So instead of just saying, okay, well, I know that I have to get 25 kids to um, do an entrepreneurship uh, project where they come up with a new idea, a new innovative idea or something, CQI will help you uh, manage the steps and the progress it takes to get there. When you're implementing a new idea or you're changing an idea, you would want to use CQI, right? Um, developing a new or improved design of a process, product, or service you would want to use CQI, right? So why are we doing this? And what are our outcomes? And what is it gonna take to get there? And what are, it's, it, uh, CQI is a little bit of a SWOT process, right? Your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities, your threats, right? So examining all of those factors um, and then saying, this is our outcome and this is what it takes to get there. After you're reviewing your YPQA improvement plans, right? So you have done an external assessment for YPQA. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, the Youth Program Quality Assessment Tool by the Weikert Center. Um, so you've done an external assessment of your program. You have people coming from the outside looking at your, your program and rating you. You've done a, your own self-assessment. At the end, what do you do with those scores? Do you just tuck them away in your email and say, okay, that was great. We got our scores now back to business as usual. You know, no, you can now start a CQI process to say, okay, why did we get this score? How can we be better? Or if you got a five in YPQA, how can we continue to make sure uh, that we are that we are receiving a five? And then also you can use CQI for planning data collection and analysis in order to verify and prioritize problems or root causes, okay? And so, you know, look, it's not just looking at a problem, but it is also identifying a root cause. What caused this problem to happen, right? How can we um, address this problem, address this root cause, and move forward from this. The, the out of school time field, guys, it is so fast paced. We only get the kids for three hours. Our full-time people are working, you know, five hours plus a one hour lunch before program starts, right? And so for a lot of us, it seems like we just don't have any time uh, to plan. We don't have any time to really prepare. Uh, we're limited, but CQI can really say, you know what, let's prioritize the things that we need because we can't address everything at once, right? Um, so who do we need to help us address these things? How are we going to address it, etc.? Okay. Yeah, my computer does not like to clearly go on to the next uh, slide. So I apologize for that. All righty. So according to the American Society for Quality, there is a um, actual model. There's a way that you do CQI, right? And the key word in CQI is continuous. That means you don't stop. Even when you lose a staff person or change in leadership, the process continues. That's actually a good thing. So I know that for some people it's like, what, we have to meet every week? I already have enough meetings. This is a meeting that you're gonna want to attend, okay? And so this is called the plan, do, check, act uh, sir, uh, model, right? So you're planning, you're establishing your measures and your targets, right? So you have your problem statement, 
and you're saying, you know what, okay, here's a problem for us. Um, we are supposed to have 50 students in our program, uh, but we're only able to recruit 23. We need an additional 27 students. How do we get there? We've been struggling with attendance. What is the problem, right? So you're saying we need to, you're planning to attract 20, at least at minimum, 27 additional students, right? Then, so then you're planning how you're doing it. Then you actually do it. Okay, well, we need a new recruitment plan and we're going to hire a DJ to come in during lunch and the DJ is going to play some music and we're going to have some pizza out there um, or in the school, in the community. We're going to, maybe our flyers were only in English, but we serve a Hispanic community. So maybe the flyers need to now be in English and Spanish, right? So you're planning then you're going to execute. You're going to do what you said you're going to do, okay? Then you're going to check. You're going to compare actual performance with the target. Were you able to meet 27 uh, kids or a recruitment goal of 27 kids? Or were you able to get 20 or did you only get two, right? Uh, then act. You take action to improve your performance. So if you only got two, you did all of this stuff. You changed the flyers from English to Spanish. You hired a DJ. You got some pizza for them. All of this stuff, right? And then you, at the very end, you see we were only able to recruit two additional kids. Then you go back through the cycle again. All right, let's plan again. So it's, so a lot of times we get discouraged as OST professionals because, you know, we want to save our kids and we want to save the community and we want to save our schools and, and all of this, but we forget that it's okay to fail at something. It is okay to fail. It is okay to not meet a goal, right? But the, the, what we have to remember is that there should be a plan of action and next steps right? So we failed at this thing. That's okay. And now we're going to move on in trying to create a better solution next time, right? So for a lot of us, we like to say, oh, oh, well, I couldn't recruit the kids or, oh, well, they kicked us out of the cafeteria or, oh, well, my bus broke down. Oh, well. And then we sit on the, oh, well. Well, CQI says, ah, ah, ah. Remember, it's continuous. Y'all like my little head movement? Continuous, I'm going with the circle. Yes, do I need to make you guys try it with me? The circle movement? Okay, I'll, I'll calm down. So remember that it is a continuous um, quality improvement measure, right? And so it's going to, it's gonna, it's a cyclical thing. So, CQI systems. Now, this is one of those like, oh my gosh, you're talking over my head type of thing. It's macro level thinking, right? It's high level thinking that supports and improves your program. That's literally all it is, right? It's a, me it's a method of supporting and it's a method of improving. So these CQI uh, uh, meetings should be taking place regularly so that you're making sure that everyone feels supported in order to improve your programs, okay? And so really quickly, I want to give an example of CQI that is done really well. And I wanna, I, I know at the beginning, I told you guys I was gonna give you an example of an organization that does it really well, but they may not know that they're doing it because they don't actually call it CQI, okay? So the Harlem Children's Zone is an organization that was founded some almost 30 years ago or maybe 30 years ago at this point uh, by Jeffrey Canada. And it covers about 97 square blocks in Harlem in New York City. I had the opportunity to work for them for five years after seeing them on CNN's Black in America back in like 2015 or something. And I was like, I got to work for them. And so I left my friends and family in Austin, Texas, and I went to Harlem for five years. It was very hard. Let me say this, okay? A very hard organization to work for, uh, but they, they, um, they do so much for their community. So the way that they do CQI really well, when I got there, I was a um, assistant, what was I, a program manager. And twice a year, 
the executive leadership. So Jeffrey Canada, George Caldoun, um, Jasmine Lewis, like all of these, the, the CEO, the COO, the CPO, senior managers would come into a room and they would invite all of the leadership from each of their program sites. So that was the director, the program director, the assistant director, and all of the coordinators, right? And they would bring you into a room. And so imagine a long, uh, maybe two or three long tables, uh, you know, in a line, and then imagine a panel of tables up here. So up here at the front is where senior leadership would sit. So imagine Jeffrey Canada sitting right there and then all of the program site leadership sitting at a table and they would ask you to bring all of your data for all of your students, right? So each of the program sites, oh, let, me, let me go back. Harlem Children's Zone is not just a regular after school program. They are dedicated to changing educational and academic outcomes. Um, and health, physical, emotional, mental outcomes for their students, right? And so it's not just providing after-school programs where there's enrichment. Um, they also have um, hired people that go in and they're called student advocates and they advocate on behalf of a caseload of like 20 kids, 20 to 25 students, meaning that they do house visits, they go to the school and talk to teachers. They create academic plans, all of this. It's very rigorous, okay? And there's like 90 goals that each site is responsible for. So in this meeting, it's called a STAT. Uh, you know, the program leadership is sitting at the table. Executive leadership is sitting at the table. And then they start to, act, they randomly pull a kid. Now you might have 300 kids in your program site. They randomly pull a kid and they say, tell us about this kid. And you have to know everything. Academics, what their grades are, because you should have collected every report card for this child. Um, how many siblings they have, what school they go to, what you know, complex or building they live in, everything about this child, right? And this is why they have student advocates. They're kind of like social workers, right? Um, and so they would ask you, and so if the question was, okay, so go through their report card and you say they have a 66 in math and a 72 in science and stuff like that, they would say, okay, well, clearly that's not good enough. What are you doing to help them raise this grade? Okay, well, um, we have been to the school three times and we've talked to the, uh, the math teacher about the 66. The math teacher said that they could, have, they could give additional homework or extra credit. Um, so we brought the kid back to our, our program. We hired a tutor to sit with this child so that they could do the da 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 da. And then their next six weeks grade was a 64, right? And so they'd say, okay, so that didn't work. What's next? Okay, so now we have gone to the parent and we have told the parent that, hey, we need the child to attend three days out of the week instead of just one or tw two days out of the week. And then we're gonna incentivize the children. Do y'all see where I'm going? And so it would be, okay, what's next, right? Because unless that child is making a 100, there is always something that can be done, right? And so I remember sitting in a stat one time where um, the next CEO was, was Ann Williams Isom. And she said, if plan A doesn't work, then you go to plan B. And if B doesn't work, you go to C. If C doesn't work, then you go all the way down to, to Z. And if Z doesn't work, what do you do? You go back to AA, AB, AC, right? There's always a solution and continue. And the purpose of that is to say that there should be continuous conversations about each of these sites. And the RCQI team consisted of the parent, the school day teacher, the health coordinator at our site, right? Because they we wanted to make sure that they were physically well and mentally well. Um, the program director, of course, the assistant director, right? So there was a CQI team that was dedicated to making sure that every goal that we had at that, at that individual campus or individual site, excuse me, program site was being met. And if it wasn't, then we needed to be able to speak on it. And we also needed to be able to say, this is the next thing that we did 
or the next thing that we plan on doing. And I know that that now that is a lot. Harlem Children's Zone does a lot, right? Um, but you know, their whole philosophy is that if we don't if we don't do this work right, then our kids could end up dead or in jail, right? Because the the rates in Harlem are, are just like that. Um, but we know that in some of our programs, it might not be as um, aggressive like that, right? But it still is literally, if we know that we have a problem and we have identified this problem, what can we do about that? And so the three stat principles that I found there, which looks very similar to the CQI model was to make a plan, actuate that plan, evaluate it, and then if it works, great, how can we make it better? You go back to a plan, or if it did not work, you go back to a plan again, okay? So that's just one example. So how do you document your CQI efforts, right? I like to, I, I have an example of an outline that I like to use uh, when I go out and I do um, workshops with people and groups and organizations that I, I like to have them, uh, I have a workbook for them, which like I said, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, then I will definitely send you a couple of copies. Uh, I'll pick a couple of people and I'll send you a couple of copies. Um, but it's just a way instead of using a notebook or something that you can really document and follow and track what it is that you guys wanna do, all right? And so it starts with your CQI team, identifying the members who are gonna support the plan, right? Um, again, people don't think outside of the box that you know a parent could help move your program along, but they uh, can be your biggest supporters or they can be your biggest enemies. We know how parents, how they can be, right? They're very protective of their, of their children because they want the best for them. So having a parent on your CQI team is important. You would want your coordinator, your program manager, um, a curriculum specialist, a teacher, anyone that you feel has your program's interest at heart. And then an area of review. So what is it that we're, what area is it that we're wanting to focus on? This is again, just an example of a CQI plan that you can use to help document your efforts. You don't have to use this one, but some of the main problems that we see or the main areas of challenges, recruitment and enrollment, student engagement, family engagement, academic support, um, all the way down to community partnerships, right? Um, so we, have, we know that in the OST field, these are some of the things that we struggle with the most. Next, you want to identify a problem, right? So is it that you know, your, your staff does not know how to create lesson plans? They, they don't know. Uh, do you have a issue with, um, you know, our principal doesn't support our after school program and is constantly complaining about it. Um, our family engagement is really low, right? So you want to state what the problem is, okay? You want to create your team, you want to have an area of review, and then your problem statement. Then, what are your outcomes? right? If the issue is that we're having a problem with the principal, the principal's not really a fan, what is your outcome? What is it that you want to happen? Well, we want the principal to attend one event this semester or do a, a walkthrough of our, of our program this semester, right? Um, it might not be a principal. You might not be a school-based program. You could be a center-based program. Um, so you want your executive director to visit or something like that, right? Uh, we want to recruit an additional 50 students, right? So being very specific about what you want. Uh, your causes, remember we talked uh, earlier about having a problem statement, but then there's also root causes, right? So it's not just identifying what the problem is, but what is causing those problems, right? Um, so you have to identify those. This is a hard one because it could be literally the people that you have on your team that are preventing the entire team and organization from being their best, 
All right. This one you can leave blank if you if you don't know. Again, this is just my tool that I use, um, but it could be an organizational goal, right? Um, Seventy-five percent of teachers will complete a teacher survey, right? Um, uh, for 21st century programs, you know, 100% um, of our students have to attend 45 days or more, right? So if it is related to a goal, you will want to identify that. And then my favorite part, how do you plan to celebrate or share with your clients or stakeholders? A celebration is not always a pizza party or ice cream and punch, right? A celebration could be, we're going to start a social media campaign that highlights the new things that we're doing, right? Um, we are going to now be able to um, have our program highlighted on a community website or uh, we're gonna add our program pictures or something to the school's webpage, you know? So that also could be a celebration. Um, or it could just be, you know, hey, we go out and we, we were able to uh, hit our enrollment numbers. And so now we're gonna go out and celebrate as a team because we did that, you know? But something that you are looking forward to that highlights the great work that you did. All right, we've got about 15 more minutes here. I want us to practice together. Are you guys still with me? If you're still with me, put a thumbs up or a here in the chat box or a girl, you're boring me, you're talking too much or a, my eyes glazed over this CQI stuff is just, mm -mm, mm -mm. all righty. So, okay, I've got a lot of thumbs up. That's wonderful. Thank you. And some people in the chat box. So we are going to practice real quick. And remember I said that I like us to be interactive. I feel like I've talked long enough. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to give us a couple of scenarios, right? And these are two scenarios. I had five, but I'm breaking it. I'm, I'm lowering it to, to two for the purpose of, of our time. Um, these are two uh, challenges that I am sure we have all faced. If you have ever worked in out of school programming, you have faced these challenges. And I want us to work through this together, okay? So here's a scenario. After school programs typically run for one to four hours each afternoon. Positions at these programs are often adopted as second jobs or part-time jobs coupled with educational pursuits. Most staff are hourly employees. They are paid for direct service to students and may not have paid time for lesson planning or training, okay? So here's a scenario. Can someone identify for me what the problem is? What does it sound like the problem is? Anybody, you're more than welcome to come off of mute. You can type it in the chat box. Could it be lack of retention or possibly staff turnover? It could be staff turnover. It could be, absolutely, because we are all facing that, right? There's a clearer, a, a much more clearer problem here. No, yep, yeah, uh, Jay Persia, Oliver Smith, I'm hoping I'm saying your, your name right. No prep time to set up their program, right? So the problem with this scenario is that people don't have time to lesson plan. They don't have time to, to do training. But we know that indicators of high quality programs are that uh, teachers and staff of after of OST programming has attended training, they're well-trained, right? And that our lesson plans include um, state standards for um, state academic standards, excuse me. Right. But what if you hire a college student and you're like, well, this college student is the one that has to do the lesson plan, but they don't know anything about your state's academic standards. They would need to go to training, but then you don't have training time in your budget. Right. So this is one of those things that we all like, you know, have to deal with. Right. So they don't have time to lesson plan. Then, you know, the common thing that I hear from the people who are in charge of budgets is, well, we just have um, someone on our staff do all of the lesson plans. 
right? Okay, that's nice, but you still have to prepare for your lesson if you've never seen it before, right? So your site coordinator has taken the time to create create all the lesson plans and then they give it to you as the part-time, oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry, as the part-time teacher that day and you've never seen it. So now you've got to look over it you have to gather all of the materials. And then this goes, this, see, all of this trickles down into like classroom management and behavior management. Because if you're not prepared, what happens? The kids sense that, right? And then they all run amok. I'm old, y'all. So I can say run amok. I can say run amok. Okay. So what, so the problem here that we've noticed is that there are um, not a lot of time for training and it's not even a time issue, it's a budget issue, right? Because now you have to pay people for an additional hour or so. Um, and then there's no time for lesson planning. Um, someone in the chat box has said, um, and many of the grants are state issues, they require 20 hours of professional development. And, and I think that number one, and I know that that's not um, a lot of time, right? Um, but I applaud those states for mandating that because there's a lot of states that do not. However, our school day teachers on average have to receive 56 hours of training. That's school day teachers to work with the exact same students that we will be working with, right? So we should be having the same amount of training. So what is our outcome here? And don't overthink things. So our problem is that there's no time for lesson planning or training. What is our outcome? What is it that we're wanting? Very simple. Y'all need me to help you out? So the, the, you, you're, wanting to, you're wanting to somehow include time for lesson planning or training in your weekly schedule, in your monthly schedule for those staff. Yeah, exactly, Paula, thank you. All righty. And so does anyone have any, um, does anyone wanna share with the group uh, some things that they have done or some ideas that they have done to address this issue? Because there's a lot of, yep, thank you, Mildred. Quality time for lesson planning, exactly. That's our, that is our, our desired outcome here. So does anyone have an idea or can share what they have tried to do or what they have heard, but maybe you've not tried it yet, or maybe your program director is not on board? Lisa says we allow 15 minutes per hour of programming for prep time and lesson planning. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, I, I have personally heard, and one of, one of the ones that I love the absolute most, right? Um, is at the end of each day, you know, parents are starting to pick up. Uh, so there's less kids. So let's say your program is from three to six. Parents start picking up between five and six, right? Because they're getting off of work. They want to come get their kids. So as the students start to decrease, you can start to decrease the number of groups that you have, right? You can start to combine. And so let's say at 530, from 530 to six, right? you have half the amount of kids, you can now condense those groups and allow for the extra staff 30 additional minutes of planning time at the end of the day, right? So then you can put them on a rotating schedule. Monday and Wednesday, K through second grade teachers will um, get their 30 minutes. So that's an, a full hour. You're not taking any extra money from the budget because they were already planning on being there for 30 minutes, right? Um, and then on Tuesday, Thursday, the third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers, right? Or if you're a high school program person, the ninth and 10th grade ones, and then the 11th and 12th grade ones, and you switch it off like that, okay? Um, Courtney, what an ex excellent, excellent, absolutely. COVID has expanded opportunities for asynchronous training, PD and much higher quality. They absolutely, um, during COVID, it absolutely is a great um, time to engage in those extra learning opportunities, uh, such as this, right? Um, you 
but you still have to remember that you have to pay people for that time. So if they're not a part-time person and they're attending a training outside of their regular program hours, you still have to pay them uh, legally for that. So really CQI. So I gave you an example. Someone else gave you an example. That is two solutions right there, right? So CQI says, you know what? Let's start off with giving everybody 15 minutes of planning time, time per hour and let's see how that goes, right? So you write down the plan, you make it clear and then you actuate it, right? And then you evaluate it and then you say, okay, well, did this work or did it not work, right? Because now people are showing up 15 minutes late for, for work because they're trying to you know, do X, Y, and Z. And then you go back and say, you know what? Okay, now we have a second solution. Now let's try to do 30 minutes at the end of the day. And so you plan for that and then you actuate it, you do it, you evaluate it, and then you redesign if that doesn't work, okay? I'm gonna check the chat box really quick. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, I had another one, but it looks like we are running out of time, guys. Uh, and my computer doesn't want to work. You know, y'all pray for y'all pray for me. Pray for pray for my laptop. Okay, that's what I'm gonna ask y'all to do. <laughs> uh, it don't want to work. It doesn't want to work. There we go. Here's another scenario, but we're not gonna be able to get to it. Um, this one is talking about including more literacy activities, but they don't know where to begin right? Because again, you might have staff that are not trained, they're not developed professionally, so they're unable to, um, they, or they don't know where to begin. They don't know how to write a lesson plan. They don't know where they're supposed to get the curriculum or, or where to get books from or what books and what does grade level mean and stuff like that, right? And so you have to figure out a solution for that. And so now we are at the end. Are there any questions or comments? Um, if you feel like you uh, do have some questions, but you don't want to ask them here. I have my uh, email address at the end of this. I, and so you can write it down. I believe I have my phone number on there as well uh, for my Austin and my Houston location. Please feel free. I am not one of those people who is like, you know, high and mighty and is like, oh, please call my secretary. No, I don't. I don't have a secretary. I have my dog and she doesn't know how to, um, she's rude she's a horrible assistant. Um, so uh, you can call me directly. I'm on LinkedIn, all of that stuff. Um, but first, if, if I could ever get my slides to work. Okay, there we go. I want to announce our workbook winners. And for those workbook winners, if you can just put your email in the chat box, then I can, um, I'll contact you for your address. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. How about is Sassy? I'm, I'm assuming this is Cecily. Sassy, S E C I. If you can put your email in the chat if you are still here. And then one more second, guys. Almost done. You guys are, you know what? Here, let me go ahead and start putting my, um, Oh, here's some resources. I forgot about this slide. If you need additional resources about um, um, CQI, these are some really good um, uh, websites. And I feel like this www.pakeys.org, uh, Paula, when I was doing the 2019 session, there were some people in my session from that organization and they were like yeah we do cqi really well i was like why are you in my thing don't judge me but <laughs> it was really awesome they were they were in there so um all right let me see here guys and then um i'm taking up way too much time because like i said i'm 40 and i cannot figure out where my my notifications and stuff are um, but how about this? Because there's not a lot of people here. How about everybody? I'm, I'm, I'm in a good mood. If you are interested in receiving a copy of my workbook, put your email in the chat box and I will send you one. How about that? 
Yay. Please don't all, you know, I, I know I'm great. I'm wonderful. Please, you know, if you are interested, <laughs> then please, um, you know, uh, put your email in the box. I will send you one. Uh, Paula, is there a way that you can get me the chat? box conversation. Perfect. Thank you so much. And guys, let me, I got one last slide here. There we, look at that. Look at that. And on time and on a time. All right. Uh, so uh, there goes my notifications right there. God wanted me to send y'all all something, okay? He wanted me to, because they're all right here now. Uh, but please, I would love to get that to you guys. I am so grateful. Paula, Elizabeth, thank you so much for the opportunity. This was such a great time. And I look forward to hearing from anyone else if they need anything from me. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I'm just going to share my screen. We are so glad that you all were able to join us for our first follow-up webinar to the Beyond School Hours Conference. Um, we hope that you will continue coming back every Wednesday. We're planning to do this up until the next in-person conference, which is February 23rd through the 26th. And we are hoping to all be together again in beautiful Orlando at the Carib Royale. So um, please check out our website. Um, beyondschoolhours.org. We will be posting about registration soon. Um, get your travel arrangements early because tickets to Florida are real cheap right now. So <laughs> thank you again. We really appreciate your time. Follow us on social media and come back next Wednesday. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Hi, Harvey. I see you. That's one of my colleagues here in the Houston Galveston area. I love it. And can I put in a shameless plug for the one next week as well? Because it's one of my good friends that, excuse me, that will be uh, facilitating that workshop. So please, if you can come back, she is so smart and talented. And I mean, she's not as good as me. Uh, don't tell <laughs> her I said that. But, you know, please come, come back next week. I will definitely be there to support her. And again, Paula and Elizabeth, thank you. You got it. Thanks, Jasmine.